Today, it's a real talk. It's an important topic where everybody has a role to play to be able to handle what we are facing in this very difficult crisis. The newest health critical challenge we are all facing in Australia and globally. COVID-19, well known as coronavirus, has been challenging so many countries all around the world. Everybody has to join the fight. We are all fighting one enemy. Be it in Australia here or anywhere else, we all have the same goal. It's a call for urgent help and support from you and from everybody that you know. I'm Dr. Joe Isaac, if it's the first time we meet. I'll include a bio in the video description and you can always search my name in Google with the right spelling to find out more about me. Our target today by the end of this video is to give you a tactical response to the current situation and help you define your role in it. On an individual level, on a community level, on an organization level, on a state level. In the beginning, we were all too busy laughing it off. Let's have a look at some videos together well test came back and it is positive for coronavirus COVID-19 I'm very sorry it's not possible I have so much toilet paper do you need to see it now it's a wake-up call it's not a joke anymore after the World Health Organization calls it pandemic. Where do we stand here in Australia? Victoria and ACT already raised the state emergency with, I assume, many states to follow here in Australia. It's only a matter of time. But, big but, very important. In this video, I'm not here to tell you wash your hands and avoid touching any surfaces or get some masks and hand sanitizers that you can't find in the stores these days. Although it's a very healthy and precautionary measures to follow these days to protect yourself and your family. I'm here to share with you the psychological impact of the coronavirus on you, on our state, on our economy, and most importantly, globally. There's a massive psychological extent with many of us working from home and many countries on a lockdown. I'm sure you would have heard how they are trying to fend it off and contain the virus in many countries, including Italy, Spain, France, and Europe in general and all the panic shopping that we have done and we continue, unfortunately, to do so. Three risks haven't been addressed in this dilemma. Anxiety, stress, and depression. If you haven't watched How to Fight Depression Without Medications, I'll link up the video up here so you can watch it and adapt your approach to the current coronavirus dilemma. Without digging into the differences between them, they are most likely to kick in with time. First, you must believe that the world is not ending and it wouldn't be ending with this virus. Even if they call it pandemic, people do recover, some don't. It's the nature of health complications and it's the nature of life. Let's all together focus on the hope without ignoring the underlying risks that we are currently facing. Let's have a look together at how some countries are battling the virus. <laughs> stand right now let's have a look together at our current stats at the time of recording this video globally 198,513 cases while recovering from them 82,763 in Australia the tally 454 confirmed cases so far NSW is the highest with 210 followed by Victoria at 94 then Queensland are the top highest three states we still have a very good strong fighting chance given our resources and our medical system System here in Australia. Now looking at it from a psychological perspective, your immunity system is your guard, is your protection. And any impact on the immunity system can have very diverse effects on general health problems, including the virus. What stress and anxiety can do to you, they can affect your immunity system by affecting the production of the lymphocytes. Without getting too technical, let's call them the white blood cells that are running in your bloodstream to protect you. When you're having that stress happening, there's a lot of studies about this and I'll put some of them in the description if you wanted to investigate further but it is unarguable that having stress 
and anxiety can really affect your health in general, which then leaves you vulnerable to the virus or anything else. The short period of stress, that's not so bad. If the stress was prolonged period or chronic, then you have a problem with the immunity system. So what can we do on an individual level? Look at country like Italy and what they have done together to raise the spirit. <laughs> that's very important to minimize stress, anxiety, and potentially depression. Another aspect is the potential power of using the social media in the virtual environment that we are in. By checking on everybody, let's raise a campaign of are you okay and safe. Panicking is definitely not the right methodology to handle a situation when you are dealing with viruses and a long fight. I call for a humane approach to protect the human life. I call upon the Australian bravery, putting the people of higher risk at first and less selfish behavior to conserve the human life. In difficult times such as this one, comes in the quote, how clever you are is determined by what you can do with what you currently have. If you don't have access to hand sanitizers, manufacture one. Put the alcohol, gel, and aloe vera with the right proportions, and there you go. Create your own homemade one. That's just an example. As I said, we're all fighting the same enemy. So you can see a lot of people, a lot of companies putting a lot of effort to fight collaboratively. And this is exactly what we need, minimizing that selfish behavior and focusing on the good for the overall. You can see Google coming up with a website that people can self-diagnose before they go for a test. And this is gonna rule out in the US. You can see Woolies is giving toilet rolls for those in need for free. You can see the government running several supportive packages to survive the current circumstances, including the Australian dollar with the most vulnerable position since 2008. So now that we've covered the basis of understanding the situation and the impact on the economy, including the Australian dollar. So the question you need to ask yourself, okay, what can I do? And that's the question I want you and everyone to answer. So here is the frame and this is exactly how it works on an individual level protecting yourself and you know what to do and you have to be extremely cautious with every single move you are making. You also have to raise awareness for those around you, including your household, how to take precautions. This is not the time for errors and mistakes. Two, check on the people that you know you have social media, you have all avenues of different platforms, check on them, get to talk together, get to hang out together and everybody's in their own place virtually. So there's no possibility of contamination. Focus on the positive side of things, understand that people do recover, understand that some people are at more risk than others and share that knowledge with everybody, share that video with people on an organization level. I do believe that all companies need to take protective measures right now by eliminating any physical touching. So any potential of having sensors where you don't have to touch to operate something, I think this will come in extremely powerful for this case. Now, as of right now, China already produced two robots that can actually check patients and give them medications at the moment to minimize exposure for their doctors, their healthcare professionals. Try to get people to work remotely as much as possible. And if they have to be physically at work, make sure that you're taking all the precautionary measures, redesign the way they seat it to maintain physical social distance. If people have have booked flights already, just put those flights on hold without them losing their money. So that way they're not really forced to travel to minimize movements and minimize the possibility of cross-contamination. Now it is an opportunity and the time for Skype, for Microsoft meetings, where you can still get things done while everybody's located in their office or located in their home or whatever they are. The technology now is the most critical part to use it in this fight. The HR department can design a webinar and run this webinar for those people that are gonna work from home, how they should work from home if they've never experienced something like this before. Sometimes people get thrown into a deep end, so get the HR department to design an induction of how they should perform when they are working from home and still stay productive. What time they should wake up, what time the meeting's gonna happen, how those meetings gonna occur, what are the best tips and tactics that they need to follow to stay on top of the game. Can the company provide an ergonomic chair, ergonomic station for them to work from home? This is something that can be designed very quickly with very low expense that is not going to break the bank. So if you are a person that you can make decisions and make that happen, I hope that my voice reaches you and you can take action based on this on a community level. Keep your social atmosphere still happening, but just take it virtually. So then that way you're still gathering and you don't really feel that you are by yourself. From a government perspective, I guess the Australian government and many others are sharing really clearly through their 
press releases what is expected and how they are planning to roll out this critical phase. So I would say just stay updated and follow the directions that you are given precisely. At the end of the day, the most important part, other than the physical components we have covered and the impact on the economy, is to understand that we need to fend off those psychological risks because if they kick in, they will put more burden on our health system, they will put more burden on the situation that we can easily avoid if we stay together, if we encourage each other, if we focus on the positive outlook of any scenario, even though it may be very difficult to find one. At the end, I hope you've taken something from this video and I hope that you take the responsibility of taking actions based on what I shared with you. And if you believe that someone else needs to hear that message, please share that video and make sure that you're an active member in those critical times because we are all getting affected. This is pretty serious and I'm not saying panic, but remember, there is always hope if we do things right and we do it collaboratively. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.